I disagree with the review of the Converse All-Star BB Prototype CX. Let's just drop the adjectives All-Star BB. We all know it's a Converse. We all know you call your basketball shoes uh, BBs and they're All-Stars. So let's not, yeah, go John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmick, Mojo Jojo all the way. Let's just make it short. It's just Prototype CX. So this, uh, I love the silhouette. It pays homage to the traditional one-star Dr. J kind of Converse shoes, hoop shoes. Um, for a size nine and a half, it weighs about 430 grams. So it's pretty heavy and it feels heavier than what the digits show, especially with the foam all around. Uh, one of my uh, subscribers called this the uh, Thanos chin. But yeah, it looks, I guess it's eye-catching from afar. The Thanos chin is the new Converse basketball shoe, but this was unnecessary. They don't need all this to provide any, uh, you know, heel stability. If you took out all this excessive foam, they could have significantly reduced the weight for the shoe. So that's a shame. For aesthetics, they just completely sacrificed butchered um, function. The, the CX foam is only about like yay thin. So all this is just for show. The CX foam is good. I love the way it performed on um, as an insole for certain shoes or as a midsole swap around for traditional Chuck Taylors to make the uh, walking comfort a little bit better. But the CX foam, it, it, I, I love it. I love it. It's like a fluffy polyurethane material. It feels like a, a lighter, fluffier uh, React, a bit denser lunar. I guess I use that expression for a lot of foams that I feel it's just, uh, just the hits just the right spot. So that's how it feels. The heel CX foam does the job nicely in terms of uh, stepping comfort and shock absorption. Uh, it's nicely rounded, so you have this nice, smooth transition from heel to toe. On the forefoot, they have a zoom air unit, and it's surrounded by what I believe is also a CX foam, and there's a very thick ortholite strobo board and also an ortholite insole. So first time you wear this shoe, you will feel the softness and plushness of the ortholite most of the time. So once you get beyond that, once you lace up and walk around and run around in it, you will feel the CX foam in action and the zoom air uh, working on certain pivotal points. But I would personally prefer uh, this plastic plate. It's inserted right underneath your foot. It's kind of placed in the midfoot so it doesn't hinder the cushioning so much. But unfortunately, it extends, it extends a little bit too further closer to the pivot point. So if it was uh, ending somewhere here, it would be better. But it's, uh, it's somewhere around here close to the pivot point. So it can feel you can you can feel it's there, but thanks to the thick strobo board and the ortho light and the zoom air and the uh, CX foam, it's not as bad. You don't feel the the plastic getting in the way as much as most other stupid shoes that had the plate right underneath your foot. But I wish they would have gotten rid of this or just made it a really short one here or something that's placed closer to the outsole. So that's uh, one, yeah, one unfortunate design flaw there, and of course this ex excess weight and this little uh, elf nose or elf shoe tip. I love this because it lets you slide your foot in nicely when you're just trying to just chuck your foot in to quickly lace up and go out and shoot some moves. So yeah, this I don't find this annoying. I find this to be uh, something that supports the cause. It's it, it has a function without trying to look too um, stupid. I guess it kind of looks stupid. Unless you're Darren Fox or um, uh, Draymond Green or one of those star players that's rocking this and if you're doing a good job who cares how stupid your shoes look they would look good if you do a good job. Uh, the tongue is very soft and thick it's got this uh, padding and neoprene material also the inner booty is sort of like, like a neoprene inner booty all around so even though it looks like it's just plain old mesh and canvas it's not as breathable as, as it looks from the outside so breathability not a great deal. The fit because of this crazy foam rubber surrounding the shoe, it feels very stuffy, stifling, and narrow. So if you have really narrow foot, you can go true to size and really enjoy the shoe. But for those wide footers, I would not recommend this. Even if you go up a whole size, you will still feel this pinching and stifling you. And even for uh, narrow footers, the problem with this shoe is that it runs kind of long if you... Uh, if you don't, you know, go down half a size or a little bit, so you will feel that discomfort here, that roominess. And most importantly, there's this crazy dead space on top of your toe box. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, the lace loops end here, so if you want to engineer some holes and make the shoe a little bit tighter around the toe box here, you can do that. But 
why pay money for that if you're buying a shoe just get something that fits so the fit to me it's a deal breaker for me unfortunately the cushioning overall is i think the cushioning is great this is the best cushioning setup that i've had in a in the recent 21st century converse not 21st century 2010 post 2010 converse basketball shoe i think this is the best cushioning setup but of course i would rather you know uh, yeah this is fine zoom air on the heel of the forefoot because the cx foam does a good job of just completely providing overall comfort and nice shock absorption there's nice padding all around to provide an adequate heel lockdown and yeah the outsole pattern it's i love it it's got these nodules and it, it grips the court really nicely but here's the problem with this nodule it's not as a uh, bristle like flexible like the ones you saw in the kobe 10s so they're not gonna let things flow out so dust will just get stuck here like it's a maze so you're gonna have to really brush the dust out or don't play in really dusty chords or if you're playing in dusty chords get ready for the shoe to make a transition into a very nice uh a dancing shoe for you to slide around a little bit so yeah that's unfortunate uh one, my biggest complaint other than the fit is this shoe is really narrow so the base is not wide enough so it's not providing that adequate uh anti-inversion lockdown at the same time look at this it's just just vertical and there's this foam is there not protruding out at all so it feels rather unstable so ankle stability or um anti-inversion lockdown i would give it a like a close to zero because it feels almost as bad as LeBron 15. So that's a huge red flag there. Uh, the price point, I think it's really nice. It's like slightly over $100. Um, my first ever basketball shoe in 1994 was a Converse Run and Slam sponsored by Kevin Johnson. And I thought that was the best shoe ever. I still feel that it was not just because of sentimental value, but Converse did produce good foam and interesting gimmicky cushioning systems and durable traction that's not so dust sensitive at the same time good wide base it wasn't the prettiest basketball shoe basketball shoes out there but i would say in terms of function and of course price point converse was the king of the hill in the uh early to mid 90s unfortunately this one uh, it's, it's getting there in terms of uh uh you know doing that little collaboration with the nike tech and of course converse's own unique cx foam but i love to see something better something lighter something that's more uh 1990s kind of uh dust insensitive type of outsole and the fit please please why are you making these crazy narrow shoes